Hi everyone, it's Michelle Lightworker here and welcome to another episode of Enlightened Conversations. I'm really quite happy to give this particular person a nice long introduction because I absolutely adore them. Uh, Kirsten Marriott is someone who I have resonated with from really the very beginning of meeting her through Soul TV. Since then, um, we've travelled different paths, but our paths dovetail back together. It's quite divine timing, really, how they, how they work like that. So let me introduce her formally to you. A highly intelligent, motivated woman, Kirsten Marriott's three-decade business back, back out, background spans into a diverse range of fields and arenas, including banking, agriculture, property investment and events, fulfilling predominantly leadership and training roles in working with people in organisations. Kirsten has acquired a long list of qualifications ranging from business management to project management. Personal stress skyrocketed during her time in the corporate world and with stress turning to serious physical illness, Kirsten reevaluated her approach to life. Thank God for that. Yeah. <laughs> driven, by, driven by her realisation of the impact of our beliefs and that they have on our emotions, Kirsten devoted herself to acquiring certifications in several personal development and healing methodologies, making the shift to becoming an emotional wellness coach. Kirsten is a master of freeing people from mental, emotional and physical stress. Who doesn't want that, right? She works with clients who are experiencing uh, chaos in their lives or seek clarity and direction, integrating powerful transformation methods to see them manifest meaningful change in their lives, both personally and professionally. Got to attest to that. She's like zero, zero in on stuff, like a laser beam. <laughs> Focusing on transformation on all levels and in all areas, Kirsten has impacted powerfully the lives of many people. Kirsten, along with her husband and three children, live in Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. Her no-nonsense approach to self-growth enables people to quickly regain emotional clarity and direction for life. I'm getting my little goosebumps on here because that's <laughs> absolutely what she does. She's an author and her soon-to-be-released book, How to Remain Calm in the Midst of Chaos, has many keys that she has found useful in balancing her life. That is so cool. Welcome, Kirsten. Thank you, Michelle, and thank you for um, having me on your uh, conversation show. It's awesome. I'm excited. I'm excited to just see how it all rolls out today. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, um, people go, what do I have to do? And I'm like, well, you've done everything. Just turn up, all right? Yeah, show up. <laughs> <Who's> up? <laughs> show up. I, I'd love to share this um, oriental fable that to me is um, – it just holds the key, you know. I just, uh, yeah, it's, it's really special. And um, it's, it's an oriental fable and it's, it tells of the ancient gods trying to decide where to hide the power of the universe so that man would not find it and use it destructively. So one god said, let us hide it on the top of the highest mountain. But they decided that man would eventually scale the highest mountain and find this great power, which we would. Another God said, let us hide this power at the bottom of the sea. Again, it was decided that man would eventually explore the depths of the sea. Still a third God suggested, let us hide the greater power of the universe in the middle of the earth. But they realized that man would someday conquer that region too. And finally, the wisest God of all said, I know what to do. Let us hide the great power of the universe within man. He will never look. He'll never think to look in there for it. So according to this old fable, they did hide the power of the universe within man and it is still there. Furthermore, they were right. Few people have ever realised that the great power of the universe, the power to kill or to cure, lies within themselves. And that's where... Um, for me, I just, it just turned on the lights for me. It was like, yeah, we've got, we have that power within to transform. We are amazing creators. So, um, yeah, and, and whatever's going in on, on in our life, we have created that no matter uh, what that situation is because that's what we, we are creators. So, yeah, it's, I, I love it. I love that. It's a special 
Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, I should have shares. I should have shares in Kleenex or Solvent or something. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Um, but it's and on a and on a totally selfish personal note, um, the thing that really struck me as you're talking is today of all days, um, because you're someone who I would always think if I was going to work with you or do anything with you, Kirsten, that you are an absolute freaking rock. And I just feel so grateful. I'm overwhelmed with gratitude for you. Um, because um, today, especially because uh, you're, it's, it's like spirits picked you up and dropped you into this particular episode because today of all days, I've really needed that support. Mm -hmm. And it's, Really, uh, nothing bad has happened, by the way. Nothing, nothing awful. People might be imagining, oh my God, what's going on with your job? Mm -hmm. the opposite. I've had, I've had really good stuff happen, but it's about, you know, like when good stuff happens and you're called to expand yourself to step into that stuff and mm -hmm. the people that you want around you. Yeah. Are people like yourself, sweetheart, that you know, you. I love this person. I can count on this person. She's freaking rock solid. She even turns up to my to my show with this amazing story and it makes, makes me appreciate it even more. Um, <laughs> uh, I just want to say uh, that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful for you. I really am. I know, I know over the past year we haven't had that much contact. We've been off doing our own thing. But uh, whenever I think of, like, moving forward, you know, people I want to work with and people I want to collaborate with, people I, I feel a, a deep resonance with. And, and, and not only that, but who I can trust. Mm. Yeah? You are, without a doubt, sister, one of those people. So I just want everybody to know that for the record because that is yeah. how I feel about you. That's, a, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And and I think too, Michelle, like there's, there's many people that – do the work we do in, in empowering people and um, helping them to be the best version of themselves uh, because, look, none of us are called to be a carbon copy of anyone. So as soon as someone says, I want you to be a clone of me, run. I've, I have actually had a trainer, a really, um, in, in our world of, the, of healing modalities, say to me, I just want you to be a clone of me. And I'm going, well, why wouldn't you want me to be the best version of me? And, and so that... That for all of our um, um, practitioners in our field and, and afar, that it's about finding our true self and being that, being that, because that's what we're called to be, not a carbon copy or a clone of someone else. And so, you know, as and part of that too, for, for me, I've found just starting this year, I'm deciding I'm going to start my year the 1st of February January is going to be all about me detoxing and cleaning out and getting rid of stuff from the previous year because, you know, we all do our Christmas and everything and we're just so exhausted. How can we possibly start the year refreshed and ready to serve and to be the best version of ourselves? So this year I said, no, January is my time because I know 2017 for me is going to be a really big year and I'm, are really wanting to empower people to take control of themselves and not hand it over to someone else. And so I've, I started um, a, a detox program, a 21-day detox, and, yes, it brings up emotions and, and, it, and it's not fun and it's unpleasant, but the I'm feeling lighter physically and also um, emotionally. Things are coming up and I'm going, okay, well, I need to address that. To be a... To be a practitioner and to help empower others, my belief is that we need to also be a, a, a client. So we need to also experience experience that um, that healing and that freedom and that letting. I'm going to say just like letting shit go, you know, because we we just we take things personally. It's nothing that happens in life is personal. So as soon as we can learn that lesson that it's just an event, it's the emotion or the um, the thoughts, the beliefs that we bring to that event from our past experiences that create the drama and the trauma around that. People die every day. People are born every day. So it's, and it's a circle of life. So it's not about, it's not a personal attack on you that 
your grandmother or your husband or your child died. It's not personal. It's a, an event and it's sad. Absolutely. It's sad because that they've been taken from your physical life. And, uh, but yeah, it's not personal. You have a car accident. It's not personal. And if you get it, get in there and think it's personal, you're actually taking the poison in effect. You're, you're actually getting, if you get angry and you get, you know, that someone hit you or whatever it is, it just, it just is what it is. So, and I think that coming into 2017, if we can take that away, you know, people won't turn up on time. They won't do what they say they're going to do. It's not about you. It's about them. Um, so that's where, um, you know, I know even for, for us when we were trying to schedule our time together, it's like, it's okay. How awesome was that? Oh, that was amazing. Because sometimes, you know, when you put out a date to someone and then they, you haven't heard back from them and you forget. And now I'm learning, like, just earmark it, like, grey it out in your calendar. Because if you throw a date out there and then you look at your calendar with someone else and it's not there, you forget that you've thrown that date out there with someone else. So it's it's really great mastery of calendar mastery. To, yes. To, especially, in, especially when you're recording, like, 30 episodes and four, actually close to 40 episodes in four weeks. So it's a lot of episodes yes, and just learning how to do all that. But yes, just to be able to work with people like yourself that go, oh, cool, yeah, no worries. And don't, oh my God, you know, because you could definitely um, uh, take it personally. Um, I, I, I'm not valuable enough. Someone else matters more or something like that. Yeah. And it's not about that at all. And it's just about, holy crap, I double booked it. Um, you know, <laughs> it's yeah, like yeah. totally yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, you know, and that happens. And um, you know, the thing that came up for me when you were talking was that, that when we allow ourselves to actually, um, uh, get, you know, let go of the junk and let go of the stuff that comes up, like you're talking about, it's like we give it, we give a chance for that that amazing being that you were talking about in your story to actually shine through. We get little mm -hmm. driblets of it coming out like little sparks of it coming out. And it's, it's yeah. like we, you know, we really start to, it starts to, I believe what happens is we, we in the beginning, we ha kind of have to give it permission to, 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 to come out by, by removing the stuff or creating a space, like you're saying, like, okay, I know what I've got to do. I've got to actually do this. I've got to walk this path. I've got to detox, blah, blah, blah. What we're doing is actually saying yes to ourselves. We're just saying mm -hmm. yes to that infinite being within, right? Yeah. And then as those little snippets come out, what people don't realise is we don't have to think our way to that being. Once the being steps out in, and, and there's enough rays shining out, it's effortless and there's not, we don't have to worry about how we're going to do what we're going to do. You know, that's the, that's the mind going berserk, isn't it? Oh, what, how am I going to do this? Uh, yeah. Worry, worry, worry. No, that all, it knows. Even yeah. If, even if in the moment we don't know, we still have sense we know. It's all good. It's just on its trajectory to exactly the steps. Every step of the way will be shown, 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 shown. And we'll, we'll be able to maintain that focus. So yeah. I, I love what you're saying. I love what you're saying that you decided my year is starting on the 1st February because I feel I really want to clear up stuff that I need to deal with from 2016. I really want to actually celebrate in at that point going yeah. through I, I, I honor you for that I, I think that we are all capable kind of interesting because your episode this episode is actually airing on um easter monday now okay. that's that's interesting because easter monday which is the uh, 17th of april comes at a time you would hope that people are stepping into newness but they're also able to let go of the past and forgive themselves and forgive other people and, and step into mm. new life. Mm. Mm. Absolutely. And, and it, like every day we wake up, it's a new beginning, you know? So it's not like that everything from yesterday has to come with us. It's, it's a brand new beginning. And um, I, I've just been listening to the recording of the four agreements. So if anyone um, has an opportunity to do that I, I recommend it and um just being just listening to the reader um because it's not the actual author speaking but listening to him talking about um being impeccable with your word 
uh, it just really resonated a lot with me because there's times we can get caught up in sending poison, let's call it, to someone else, but also to ourselves because we get caught up in the judge victim, even just with ourselves, within ourselves. And we, we judge ourselves uh, for something we did yesterday and then we become the victim and then something else will come up and prove that, yes, we are the victim, poor little us, and then, then we'll do something else. And then we just get this perpetual roller coaster. So we just keep taking our own poison. And, and then also when we are um, speaking of others, and, and I just really need to be mindful for myself too, that when I'm speaking, because that word has power, the word has power to create and the word has power to kill. Um, so, you, you know, there, it, it's just something that, that being impeccable is really, it really resonated with me. And when you're moving forward each day, like, yeah, you may have stuffed up a bit that day, but you're aware of it and you go, okay, well, tomorrow's a new day or the next hour is a new hour. It's, that being the judge is really detrimental to your emotional well-being because it just keeps us in that, you know, roller coaster. We go round and round and we just don't get off. We can't get off the ride until we are conscious about that, um, yeah, about what we're doing to ourselves. So you'll, you'll notice that when you stop and are aware of how you speak because, I, I mean, I've, with the detoxing, there's lots of stuff coming up for me and I'm, the word gets a little bit haywire um, so, <laughs> so, and so I'm just really now mindful so it's been perfect timing for me to um, listen to that while I'm, I'm having my treatments and commuting back and forward that um, it just uh, really remain, uh, reminded me to think about how I'm speaking to my family because we get in a pattern that we speak a certain way and it's kind of like oh you got to Pull that back because the people that you love the most are the ones that cop it the most, I've found. Um, so you, you tend to be really quite um, uh, nice to those outside, but the, but the ones at home are the ones that suffer. And, um, you know, the, and the other thing around that that really resonated for me was the fact that um, the people that you have in your life and that you attract in your life are the ones that treat you um, about equal to how you feel comfortable about treating yourself. Now, if people, does that make sense? So, so if you're treating yourself really nastily and harshly, you will attract people that will treat you the same and you'll tolerate that. If someone steps above that and treats you really bad and you're not okay with that, you'll, you'll stop that. But you will still put up with the, the equal. So we've got to start, you know, getting back in to ourselves and that power within, as we said in the fable, that we need to really honour honor that light within us and not keep trying to douse it out. Um, and the word is one way that we do that. We just tear ourselves down um, just with that mind chatter that goes on in the head and, you know, the, and the choices we make. So, yeah, it's... Um, yeah, it's been, it's been an amazing, what day are we in now? Um, 18 days into the year. So just um, that, that shedding process and that realisation that we, we are really, you know, powerful and to honour that, to get rid of the baggage is really yeah, a, um, an honour honouring, a self-honouring um, process that we need to all go through to awaken, to, to step up. Yeah, and to take our rightful place. Yeah, exactly. And it's it's interesting. I love the way you talk about poison and chaos and things like that because often we think that um, you know the chaos is um, external, but we we like you were just talking about just a minute ago. It's like we we have the power to create internal chaos like mm, so absolutely. easily. And, yeah. You know the whole the whole point of like um, enlightened conversations is to start role modeling how well, how actually how we our kind speak to each other um, and so therefore people can start to internalize it that this dot this is the kind of dialogue we want happening internally we want to we want to be having enlightened conversations with ourselves we don't want to be having you know conversations that are judgy and conversations that are polarized and we, we want to have all embracing conversations that welcome welcome different opinions and and try and find 
how those things serve us rather than cast them into the right and wrong category and mm. and 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 create what I, what I believe is that poison that you're talking about because the minute we start to judge and the minute we start to do that kind of stuff we, it's, it is like taking poison mm. and uh, so we have a lot of you know like back to that back to that story and, and also what you said at the beginning I kind of feel like we have this opportunity to step into permission giving ourselves permission for yeah. a new way of allowing ourselves to do something different in that relationship with ourselves so that when we're speaking to our family um, and, and, and also our relationships and our friends, you know, the people that, as you're saying, the ones that are really close to us that usually we treat, you know, how's your father? It's like, oh, dear, <laughs> you know, if I just, people out there in the community saw what I just said to oh, and the way I said that, that wouldn't look good, you know? Would I be yeah. comfortable if somebody would look at me talking like that, you know, at that moment in time? We've all done it. Yeah. And you go, oh, but, you know, um, it's, 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 it starts to become more normal to have those respectful conversations with the people yeah. around us so, yeah. because, because, because we are coming into a place then in ourselves where that's how we're dialoguing. And yeah. so why wouldn't we, like you're saying, we treat other people or allow ourselves to be treated by other people the way we treat ourselves, same mm. goes we treat other between ourselves yes. as well yeah. so that's yeah really cool that's a really cool tool to notice mm. how i'm speaking to my to one of my family members like any one of them and if i'm not being respectful well i need to do some work here there's something mm. here that i haven't quite looked at because i'm allowing that like i'm actually allowing myself to do that whether it's conscious or not yeah. it doesn't matter but i'm allowing that mm. absolutely Absolutely. And, and you find yourself, you know, you'll walk past the mirror and you'll go, oh, gee, you're not going to be shabby. You know, in your head, you'll inter internalise it in your head. So instead we, we walk past and say, look at you, you amazing being, you know. Like we're all created with our imperfections for perfection, you know. So that's, um, and that's how, you know. And we all have issues. We all have life that comes up. And, and, and around the, um, like, decisions, making a decision, and I've found that's really, really powerful and, and not let people hang, you know, not let finalise things. Because when we have mental clutter, you know, with that chaos going on, it's because there's so much unfinished business in, in your head. I'll give you an example. Um, recently... Um, my husband's aunt passed. So, so last year she passed away and his, his father is now, he's an executor for the will. And so he's 80. So he's an, an old executor. And so he, he's got a lot to juggle and a lot to go on. And so my husband um, in his, he, he likes to please people. Um, and, and he's, he's an amazing guy that, the thing that he thought was, oh, I won't tell dad that we don't want something because it might hurt him. I'll just let it go for a week. Now, I said to him, Dale, that's actually creating more stress because now his mind is still got unfinished business that, oh, Rod might want that couch. We don't want the couch. So say it. Say, say what you want and say it up front because then the person with whatever the, the agreement or agenda is can, can write you off that and say, no, okay, great. They're not available or they're not needing it because with my father-in-law, there's a lot of stress that is going with that. So that was just adding more to the stress. So I got a little bit grumpy with him because I understand the stress and I said to him that you really have to finish the business don't try and please people and make it feel okay because they just, all they want to know is a decision, whether you want it or not. If there's no decision made, then it's left hanging and, and other, it, it doesn't allow others to come in and to receive that benefit. So, yeah, so that, that was just one thing that, that really, um, I see it a lot of, especially with people pleasers that they just don't, they don't honor themselves and say exactly what they want. They just don't want to hurt the other, but you're actually hurting them more by letting them go through with an agenda still running because they're not, that's not finalized. So yeah, so that, that is, has been a really, um, it's just really highlighted to me, especially through this executor type thing and being involved as a family that, um, you know, that it really, 
yeah, stress is, is, it comes in many forms in our life. So the less, the less unfinished business you have, the better, you know, even if you've got to, you know, we're in the new year now and if you've got to declutter, you know, write a list of what you need to do. Declutter, so your head's not thinking about what else you need to declutter. And then as you declutter those areas, strike them off because then you're, you're taking, taking the stress down in your life as well. So, um, yeah, it, it's pretty cool. Um, it's pretty cool to do that. Yeah, yeah, it is, isn't it? And it's, it's really, uh, this is funny, but the thing that came through for me as I was listening to you was like, you know, because I'm a recovering people pleaser too, okay? So I'm putting myself in this category. Okay, peeps, don't worry. I'm not standing in judgment. But it's kind of, it's kind of funny how people pleasers um, withhold information and really what they're saying is, I think I know the best. And it's actually quite arrogant. When you think about it, it's so acutely arrogant, yeah. but we don't realise it because we're so nice. Yeah. You know, like we're just always, you know, we're just trying to be nice and save people from their issues and their pain and, 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 and making it all better for them. But, but, but really what we're saying is, I know best. Mm. I know what you need. You don't mm. need to feel pain. You don't need to feel this. You don't need to feel that. It's like, whoa. Actually, let me maybe take do. pain for you. Yeah, let me take your pain or whatever, you know. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But like even that whole judgment on pain itself too, I think too, because when yeah. you think about it, I can, I can totally relate to this one. Like in my family of origin, I did not want to feel pain. Usually it was the pain that was being created around me. So I mm. try and please everybody else make it to make to fix my family so that I wouldn't feel pain they would if they felt pain I felt pain so let's go fix them so I aka don't have to feel pain right yeah. so it's kind of interesting that that we think we're doing it to help another person but I think what we're really doing is we're trying to save ourselves from the pain and the discomfort and we're mm. making it about that. I think you, you see this too in cheating. You know, people who cheat on their partners um, or are having an affair and want to leave their relationship and they can't bring themselves to tell the person because they love them, they don't want to cause them pain. But what they're really doing, what they're really saying is, I don't want to feel the uncomfortable feelings around my behaviour or the fact that I want to move on. And so mm. I won't tell that person. So I think mm. it's, it's a big one. It's a big one yeah. because they actually, you know, they actually think they're doing their partner a favour by not telling them or prolonging it, but they're actually they're lying to themselves, really. Absolutely. And it creates even more chaos in the people pleaser's life because they're, they're trying to, one, not get caught out, so as far as a cheater, like a cheater example, or just, a, you know, even in, for my husband's example, now he's got to think and he's got to get back to his dad to soften the blow to say, no, we don't want that. Instead of just saying it straight up. You know, um, yeah, and and it's uh, it's it's an interesting um, it's an interesting conundrum we find ourselves in the people pleasing. So I've I've always had the mantra. I think since I'm 18, it would have been 18. It's none of my business what others think of me. Yeah. It's none of my business, and so that's kept me in pretty good stead because it's okay. it's not. <laughs> It's not my business what, what you think of me at all. It's what I think of me that's the most important because it's, it's, that's that poison that we can um, consume if we're not thinking highly of ourselves. And, and um, yeah, it's, and, and I really need to be mindful what I um, say to people, but how they interpret it still is not my responsibility. Yeah, that's an, an, an exquisite emotional boundary uh mm. mine i'll tell you mine um I, I got it directly downloaded from pia melody in her book facing codependency so i can't take credit from it i mean maybe the words have changed over the years so maybe well you know i'm not going to take credit for something that i literally used as a mantra but it's what you say uh what you what you think feel and do is about you and your history and not about me what I think, feel, and do is about me and my history and not about you. And so that's a really awesome emotional boundary statement. I have lived by that mantra as well um, because it helps to really go, um, we are responsible for what we're, what we're experiencing, completely mm. responsible for that. And in that process of taking responsibility, then we can make our decisions with a clear head because if we are actually 
muddled energetically with other people's business and our business on them and blah, 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 blah. Talk about chaos. You've probably written about it in your book. Like that is chaos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's when we, you know, even when I'm working with clients, it's none of my business what's going on for them until they're sitting there in front of me. Like, you know, because outside that boundary is where I don't need to pick up all their goings on and their energetic um, disharmony or whatever it is going on. It's, it's in that, in that one hour time zone or whatever it is, that is when it's my business because they're wanting to um, get solution or a re resolution for that particular, whatever it is going on for them. So, so then I have boundary in that. So I, I don't walk up the street now and pick up everybody's whatever's going on. I mean, I can observe and see things that are happening, but I'm really clear because I don't need other people's chaos in my life because I don't enough of my own that I need to um, manage. So taking on, and I think we're, especially with people who, who work in our um, field, they, they do they burn out too much if they're taking on everything, you know? So once, once people leave my time limit, allocated time, I'll go to the toilet, wash my hands, done. So, so whatever else is going on for them is none, none of my business until I'm re-engaged again. So I just have a, a really, um, yeah, really strict boundary around that because it, it, it will honor my time and my mental, um, capacity to to be the best for the next person or whoever is um is coming coming through to to see me and connect with me so yeah, so yeah. It, it, boundaries are very important absolutely and i think too it's like every client um they'll they'll step into their willingness of when they action the suggestions that you make your business anyway and mm -hmm. and so therefore there's already a boundary in your practice there because you know that that's their they're, they're, they're free will. And then when they go too, it's like, well, if they action that, they action it. But mm. if they don't, well, that's, I think, I think a good boundary is, is that level of surrender, Kirsten, where the, the client steps out of the room and into God's arms, you know, or spirit's mm. arms or yeah. whoever's yes. arms, goddess, yeah. mother, whatever we want to call its arms. And mm. we go, you know what? And we step out there too. We step into that too. Um, mm. Spirit's got this. They're on the journey, not for me to judge when, how, if they change. Um, I've been of service. I've turned up. I've done what I felt called to do during the session. Yeah, and absolutely. that really is great burnout prevention, though. It, it, mm. it seriously is. Um, there have been times that perhaps after a session I've, I've been processing a bit about it. You know, that's okay, just working through a few things. Perhaps triggered off something in me. That's cool, too. Yeah. And then yeah. just working through. But I still feel like if... We keep thinking about or worrying about a person like over and over again. That's our issue. That's our problem, not their problem. And next, so next uh, yeah, we need to, I mean, I do have one of my favorite things to do is to literally imagine a pair of God hands and just to hand them over and go, you got this, like, yeah. I need to see you or something. But that happens extraordinarily rarely nowadays. But, you know, in the past, I, I did have a little tool that I used just in case someone was coming back, boomerang, boomeranging back around in my mind, which was mm. meaning. I wasn't confident that spirit had this. So I had to work on that confidence, not necessarily on worrying about the person that didn't help at all. So, yeah. And I think too, like in, in our field that if we think we're the only one that can heal them, well, it, it's like, it's such an ego driven. That's where we edge God out, isn't it? The ego is like, well, we can do this, God, you know, step aside, you know, let us handle that. This is where we see um, amazing burnout potential happen because we aren't the healers, the person within, as we said earlier in the, um, in the fable that told us that the that man's, the universe is within man and that's where the answers and the healing is. We're facilitators for that not necessarily we're not the healers the the the, um, the person the vessel that is before us is it has that power to heal and there'll be something that we say or something that has come through for us to share with them in that moment that could be just the switch and then it, and they go wow okay yeah i never looked at it that way and so that part of their journey and we've been a um a, a really 
key part of that, but we're not it, if that makes sense. We're, we're just a, a vehicle for them to, to have that realisation. To um, And that's where, you know, for me, I, I, um, I don't rebook a next client. I just say, you'll know when you need to come back. You'll know when you need to see me. Um, and it probably affects cash flow, but heck, I'm, I'm looked after. I'm fine. But it's, it's around just honouring the person and knowing that God's got me, God's got them. So, you know, it's all, it's all going to work out perfectly for both practitioner and, and client. So, yeah, it can be really, really dangerous, I think, when, when we start to think that we are the... We are the healer. We are the one, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. It's a bit icky when, when you kind of get to the level where you think, oh, shit, I might have been doing that for a little while. Uh, <laughs> you know, well, yeah, because we could have, you know, like stepped into it and then gone, oops, you know, especially with the worrying thing. Like we don't think that worrying about someone is doing that. But how many of us have worried about someone? And that's yeah. what, effectively what we're saying. You know, mm. and it's an easy thing to slip into as a mum, as mm. a daughter of a mother, you know, not worrying yeah. about our mums or mm. our partners. We've all done it. So I mm. think it's, it's one of those things that, uh, yeah, we can build our trust muscle for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and our faith muscle for sure. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm really curious as to what prompted you to uh, write your, your book, Sweetheart. Well, it, it all came through for me um, coming off, as you said in the, in the introduction, uh, coming off a really stressful um, period of my life. And, and you know, and and, and I have done a, a, a vlog before about this. Just that that we as humans have to race. We're a human race. We're actually a being, not a race. We're a being. And uh, and when we're racing. We're always competing. We're we're competing. We've got to get the best this, the best that, the um, the shiny objects. We chase them, and and not so much was I chasing the object, but the the outcome for me was the freedom uh, that that these objects would would you know supposedly uh, give me, and in chasing that that a lot of stress um, presented itself. Um, I became really quite fatigued, um, adrenally exhausted, uh, and I just was just like a burnt out rag. You know, you just kind of couldn't um, couldn't function. And so I started looking in, looking into the reasons why, because I've done the, you know, like the the, the TAFE type um, scenarios, the occupational health and safety type stuff, you know. And then I'm going, oh, no, there's more to it. And I just wasn't quite, you know, um, wasn't gelling. Like there's more to it than this. Because I, I had, um, you know, doctors say to me that, um, oh, you, you need to just have a hysterectomy and everything will be fine. And it's like, right, okay. <laughs> so I thought, well, we were born with it. There must be a reason for that. You know, just if it was meant to um, just come out, we'd have a zipper and it would just take it out when it was, you know. So it didn't kind of what they were saying with what was going on with me didn't quite resonate. And I knew that a lot of my symptoms were stress-related. One, not honouring myself, chasing the shiny objects. Then, um, th then also uh, I was... I came across um, a heart math and I uh, learnt the heart math um, processes and so forth and just really getting getting yourself back into balance in the moment because many of us leave, they think that um, a, a crisis will come up or a bit of chaos around them will come up. They'll go, oh, I'm going on a holiday next month. That's going to be okay. Well, this is where we, we bottle it and we, we kind of binge, we binge recover, you know, <laughs> Yes. And we don't, we don't do it in the moment. We don't, we don't calm ourselves in the moment because all those chemical reactions that go off in our body in, in the stress, uh, they, they keep going on before you get to that holiday. So we need to be able to master our um, emotions and our uh, responses to emotions and so learning that was, was key and I'm still learning that from, you know, because... <laughs> Yeah, there's things that still come up. Um, I'm still human after all. 
And um, so the so that got me on a journey. And then then I started to think with that. Now that's great because that teaches me how to be in the moment and to to calm myself and to be present. But then I was going. I'd really like to get in under the hood because if that pattern keeps reoccurring, if that keeps reoccurring, well, why? So I got that really curious kind of mind. And so then I'll go, okay, so there must be something that's causing that. So then that took me into other um, modalities in that, that quest, that, that search for the, the reason why, and then understanding, you know, the epigenetics and, and how that a belief that our great grandfather had or an experience that he had can affect us today because of the effect of the stress on his body and how that that's you know changed his dna and 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 that passes through and like a trauma and and so it just really opened up my whole like wow seriously and so some things you know people can get really angry over something and then they can't find a something in their lifetime that is a trigger and it could be the fact that it was their grandfather that you know lost his hat for something and uh and so that really just kind of for me put it into perspective that um we were all related you know we're all interrelated and and how we react to situations affects the next person it affects our generations it affects those around us um so so the book for me um became just like a we need to get this message out that that we are a holistic being and and many aspects do do affect us uh so you know we, we just need to be conscious and and it's okay to be angry it's not like um it's it's not it's a part of us we've been created to show that anger but it's a, it's about how we we uh, process that as well if we continue to be angry that's when we've got problems because then that becomes a personality trait and then it just gets bigger and bigger and we don't want to be known as that angry person um, because, yeah, there, there's time there's a time and a place to really let that lion out, you know, and roar. Um, and, and there's a time and a place to actually have the kitten come forward and to, to um, just, you know, be playful. But if we're stuck in those those um character traits for forever you know we we just don't get anything done you know so we can cripple ourselves by being caught in the you know the airy fairy or caught in the you know really um, hostile situations so yeah and, and then we're not open to to other ways of being either so um yeah so it's so that that's really got the, the journey going for me and the book and looking for um signs and symptoms to, to look out for and to and to how to process them yourself and um and, and i incorporate um different modalities and along with essential oils and I, I love their their power to assist us to move through emotional um responses and challenges to really um that's earth has given us some amazing amazing tools that we can have for that healing and and for if we just allow ourselves to listen within everything will will start to to come you know if you're told what to do i'd be cautious but if you're if something's explained and and um and so well this this is something that you know you could and you you resonate with that go for it because there's there's no right and wrong but you just need to make sure that that you're resonating with it and you're not told to do it there's two different two different things that go on there on a, on a, your intuition and your gut instinct on it because there's always yeah. there's always something to be learned absolutely yeah. and i think too it's like one of those things where um we choose things to help unlock us but to also support us in that unlocking process as well you know letting that that light yep. shine out because the two go hand in hand. If we feel like we're overwhelmed or we're not really being supported in that unlocking process, that's really red flag, guys. You know, yep. if you've got someone saying, "Well, you got to do this process, you got to do that process," you got to, you go, "Holy crap!" You know, I can't keep up. I'm just not feeling supported. Then, then, then either gain support outside of that before you progress or alongside doing that. You know, don't take it seriously. And the mm. other thing that I was feeling into as you were sharing 
was about the anger and about um, it's okay to be angry. And it's really like, I've always found there's never a, a bad emotion because I know that that off the, um, when we sit in them for too long, they're like, you know, they can create a, a lot of um, chemical imbalances and psychological imbalances as well and personality disorders and that kind of thing. But if we catch up, emotional reality and feelings as they arise and we actually say to those those parts of that feeling oh well, what's behind you like what's what's causing this what's driving this like you're saying be curious mm. and dive in um i feel like that really helps us to um come like you're saying to to, to really clear the way for that in intelligence to come through like for that intuition and for mm. all of that we get there quicker so mm. you know packaging up emotions is bad and blah doesn't help at all does it no no it really doesn't because it like then again it's like that um that situation where we're judging ourselves you know i'm not allowed to be angry or i'm not allowed to be disappointed or i'm not allowed to you know there, there's always there's always a learning out of it you know that's okay well I'm not going to allow, well, that situation, I, I've now experienced that, that situation. So if that should come up again, well, I know what the trigger is. So it's not going to, you know, I'll deal with the trigger prior. So then it's, it's not there ready just to erupt. And suppressing, suppressing the emotions too is not the way to go because that, that is where we have disease. Um, disease comes in and very serious diseases if we, if we suppress for too long, uh, again, that can come into people pleasers. They don't, you know, let 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 their emotions show because they want to keep everyone happy. Um, you just have to ask my kids. My lid goes off a few times um, <laughs> around the house, but you know, I can't. I come back down. I go, okay, what's what's triggered? What's triggered me on that one? Um, uh, you know, so it's it's about being really mindful of how you you operate in the world and to um and how you process so it, it is important to deal with it deal with the trigger that's creating that because you you know there's some serious diseases on this planet that we have the power to create and we have the power to cure uh in in our own body so and it's how we think it's how we react it's what we believe uh, in the situation and also how we nourish our body on a physical level as well that all comes into into play uh, with with those um, yeah diseases and so forth so yeah it's it's pretty cool how powerful we really are mm. it is pretty cool isn't it um, when we give ourselves a chance to really uh, love ourselves into um, that special place that those those um, amazing beings at the beginning of the show we're talking about saying mm, how can we hide this well you know what we can we can find our way there if we love ourselves enough can't we mm -hmm. so it's kind of interesting it's like you know that the road to that enlightenment um is is really not a judgy way and it's definitely a loving way because mm -hmm. you know we're clever and we shut down when we're judged yeah so we're, that is not the answer because we're just locking doors. Yeah. So, uh, and, 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 and also the answer is not to be so open that we lose touch with our, what's true for us as well insofar as taking everything in, like you're saying, just taking someone's word on and just chewing on that and saying that's my reality when in fact it's actually perhaps not so close to what you really feel and, and to give ourselves a chance to digest what mm. we feel resonates with us and one of my favorite sayings love this saying take what you like and leave the rest don't judge the rest just take what you like and leave the rest yeah that's because, good so seriously part of enlightened conversations because if i have a conversation where i disagree with 99.9 .9 .9 of that person i could be focusing on all of that getting angry creating poison um for myself internally thinking what an idiot they are, just getting on that tangent. Or I could be looking for the 1%, that's the gold nugget that I needed to hear, that I needed to own, that I needed to embrace. So mm. it's it's kind of like, you know, we can gear ourselves into the, into the flow every second of the day, you know. Mm. So it's, you know, there's, there's um, 
there's magic when the kid doesn't want to put the dishes in the dishwasher. You know, um, there's there's magic in that situation. Do you know? I mean, I'm getting into the brass and tacks of being a mum and, yeah. do you know, yeah. all that kind of stuff, but yeah. there's an opportunity for real connection and engagement rather than control dramas and dictatorship. And there's, 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 there's lots of things that we can do that we don't and or, or, or that we choose not to do um, that we can do differently. There's a million opportunities a day, isn't there, Kirsten? Um, Oh, absolutely. There is, there is. Lots of practice. Yeah. yeah. And, it, and it's kind of like, you know, don't sweat it, you know, don't sweat it because it does, it does work out. And like with the kids, they're not going to be there forever. It feels like they're going to be there forever, but then they're, they're really not. Uh, the, the place, um, the place sort of, you know, goes through the, the, the ebbs and flows when they, they come and go, but um yeah, and I know it does get very frustrating the home front to, with that sort of things. So people don't pick up, and you know when your children get to adult age and they still don't pick up, you go, hey, and then you probably start judging yourself a little bit because maybe I didn't teach them properly, you know. So you start taking on the poison again. But um, and and I think the you know culturally, especially women, I think we've been led to believe don't be selfish. You you are the um, the, the, the matriarch of the home, it's your responsibility to do this, do that, don't be selfish. So if you go off and do some self-care, oh, am, am I being selfish, you know? It's actually self-respect to honour yourself. It's not being selfish It's and saying no to things, you know? If you don't want to go and um, do a particular whatever it is because you're feeling a bit drained, a bit tired, say no. It's self-respect. It's actually more harmful for yourself to put yourself in that situation that you really don't want to because the whole time you're there, you've got the mental stuff going on through your head going, I really shouldn't be here. I should be home. You know, I just want to be sleeping or whatever you want to do. So it's, it's around that, that self-respect and, and for um, mums of young kids, especially, I think they find that a bit of a challenge because time is really, there's not a lot of that. But as, as they, they get older, um, the children get older, it becomes easier. But, yeah, it's selfish should be, you know, kind of wiped out from our, <laughs> our thought process, especially as women, because it's, it's really about honouring your light and your needs as well and what, what you need to continue in your role, whatever that is, you know. And if, you, if it's at home with the kids and that's your role, that's an amazing role and responsibility. And you need to be at your best for that too. So it's not a it's not a big a big char, you know deal to just say to your mum and mother in law or someone around. Look, can you have the kids for an hour? I just need to just have some time where I just chill, and just allow you to do that. Now, where I think you could probably deem it as selfish if that's every day for you know long periods of time, you dump the kids. So it's all about balance, I think, is really what, what it's about. It's um, just balancing that and when you're exhausted, look for ways to, to honour yourself, to, to recharge so that you are the best for what you're, you know, bringing, bringing to the world. And, and whether that's mum or whether it's a working mum as well, you know, you just really need to, to um, look, after, look after yourself because the world needs you in whatever capacity that is. Absolutely. I, I, I remember reading in a book, uh, um, Set Yourself Free by uh, Shirley Smith. She said, she, she, she described that they're selfish and they're selfless, but we want to be in the middle, which is self-ing, which I liked that. It was a new word and she created this new word, self-ing, and I love new words. I love creating new words. And it is, it's about, it's a verb. It's how can I actually love myself? Um, because I reckon when, we serve the me, we serve the we, really. Yes, uh, yes. The best capacity, the, they get the best of us and our energy. And so mm. it's where, you know, the more we understand that and really connect with that, the, the best mothers that we are, where we're externalised and projected our mothering skills towards our kids, we need to internalise them and mother ourselves so that we get the best of ourselves and then they get the best. They will get the best of us because we'll be more tolerant, we'll have yeah. more energy have way much more love to give. So um, thank you so much for joining us today. I really want people to be able to find you, um, to have you got an idea on anything coming up that you want to share? Um, do you know when your book's being launched and all those kind of things? 
Well, the book the book shouldn't be far away now. Well, by the time this episode, it should be launched by then. So yeah, just just look out for it. How to remain calm in the midst of chaos, and um, yeah, it should be yeah because it's an April episode. So welcome to April, everyone. Uh, so it'll be there. My website is www.kirstenmarriott.com, and um, Mar- Marriott has two R's and two T's and Kirsten has a Y at the end there too. So there is a few little spelling um, things there, but um, yeah, just reach out. I'm on Facebook as well as Emotional Wellness Coach so you can connect on there too. So um, I'll be out and about um, doing a lot of um, work over the coming months with the essential oils as well and helping people to um, learn more about those and how they can incorporate those in their life, spiritually, physically, mentally. And um yeah, and emotionally. So it's it's really it'd be great to meet many of you. I look forward to it. Thank you oh, very much, Michelle. Oh, you're you're absolutely welcome. And I just I failed to mention that you have been a contributor for Light Liquor Advocate magazine, and I do adore you for that. And you shared so many wonderful things with us. So um, if you want to check out any of Kirsten's um, articles, because she's done it quite a few, um, you can always check out our back. In- issues of um, like Career Advocate magazine as well and get to know a bit better even the written word there so thanks again beautiful soul sister I uh, look forward Thank to you. seeing your journey unfold and all that beautiful bright light coming and shining out of you as well yep. sweetheart yeah, shine a light and everyone else shine theirs because um, that's where the world becomes a beautiful place absolutely blessings sweetheart thank you bye